So today I wanted to talk about Microsoft Docs. So if you're not familiar with Microsoft Docs, you need to get familiar with Microsoft Docs. Microsoft Docs, located at docs.microsoft.com, is Microsoft's new center of the universe for all things Microsoft. As you're probably aware, over the years, we've had things like TechNet and NSDN and 20 plus other sites that had a bunch of information that was never kept up to date. Now, what Microsoft's done in the last couple of years is they've centralized everything in docs on Microsoft.com. So you might be asking, what makes this different? Well, docs is all based out of GitHub. So Microsoft is treating docs as code. So what happens is that the product teams are responsible for delivering their products and features with documentation at a minimum level. So if they don't hit that minimum level, features don't get rolled out. So documents are required as part of the process. And then there's teams in Microsoft that are responsible for maintaining that. And one of the beautiful things, because it is with GitHub, is that Microsoft wants you to help out. So you can go and edit your own documentation using GitHub. And all you need for that is a GitHub account. So let's take a look at docs. So as you can see here on the front page, it's got some nice icons with all of the different products and you can click on any of those that you wanna work with. You can also go down into the directory to see all of the products. At this point, 100% of the docs aren't moved over but Microsoft is in the process of moving everything over into that space. So this makes a really cool learning portal for those of you that are trying to learn any new technologies. So let's take a look at Azure. So Azure, that's kind of my new area that I'm really big, really hot on, because I think for IT pros that Azure is really the area that is going to be of huge importance for all of you in your future. So when we go into the docs area for Azure, we see a getting started area with all of the different things that we can do. Deploying infrastructure, securing and managing resources, all kinds of things. You see the products, so you can dive into the different products that are available. The SDK and tools area, showing you languages and frameworks that are available then we can get into the architecture for Azure as well. So let's go back to get started, because what I want to do is I want to go through the process and show you how to work with a Windows virtual machine in Azure. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. When you bring it into the documentation, you see down on the left side, it has a listing of everything for the Windows VM documentation in Azure. So we have overviews. We have quick starts, how to use the portal, PowerShell and Azure CLI. We also have tutorial samples, tons of information for you to get started. So I'm gonna go down here to the step-by-step -step tutorials. You notice there's 14 steps that basically walk you through a bunch of the learning things that you need to know to get started with Windows VMs on Azure. So I'm gonna go straight to number one, creating and managing Windows VMs. And you'll see it brings up the documentation page. At the top, you'll see when it was last updated, so it was updated on the 9th, gives you approximate time to read. And then these are all the contributors. So say you had an edit for this page, your icon would appear up there with all of these people. Some of those are from Microsoft. Some are probably from the community as well. And then you see at the top, it'll always give you a checklist of all the things that are going to go through here. So at the top, it tells you that there's a couple cool things in the docs here is that it's got a try it button. So not only can you just simply copy code and then go over to the portal, log in and all that stuff, you can click that try it button and it will launch the cloud shell and allow you to be able to copy that code right into your Azure subscription. So I'm gonna, just gonna go down here and I'm gonna go down to the area where it has a create resource group. Notice it has a link here that'll go out to the PowerShell command so you can read up all about that if you need to know more. So we go down here, we see we've got our code box here by clicking copy, that'll copy the code to my notepad. So I'm gonna go ahead and click try it. 
and it'll show me to log into Azure and it's going to bring up a prompt for me to put in my credentials for Azure. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my credentials. And then I select the subscription that I want to work with. And it's going to open up the Cloud Shell. One of the things that you'll notice with the Azure Cloud Shell on the PowerShell side is it does take a bit for this to get loaded up. I know this is something that bothers a number of people. It kind of bothers me. It takes a while for this to load up. I often have to go do something else and come back. But I know that it is something that Microsoft is fully aware of and it's something that they're working on to make this a better experience for you. So once this connects in, then we can copy in our code. And notice when I scroll up and down, the Cloud Shell stays in one place so I can look at all of my code, I can look at all of the samples, read those, and simply go line by line to start working with those. So then I'd simply copy this, once my terminal is available, I could simply paste it right into the Cloud Shell and we'd be good to go. So that's how we use the Cloud Shell portion, the Try It portion within Docs. So a number, another thing that I want to show you, and just close out of here, is how you go about actually suggesting a change to a doc. So let's say there was a piece of information in here that either was misspelled or I don't think that it was the correct wording for that. What I could simply do is I could go over here and notice there's a little pencil and I click edit this document. And notice this takes me right into GitHub. I was already signed in. Or actually, I'm not signed in with GitHub. So you'll notice that has all of the contributors up here. It has all of the documentation listed here on GitHub. So if I want to work with this, I'd go over to the pencil. But notice it says I need to be signed in. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Once I'm signed in, I can click the pencil. And what this does is this creates a new branch off of this document. So it basically forks it. And so what that means is that any changes that I make in here don't impact the production document. I'm basically making a change. I'll ask for a pull request. So basically a request to have this pulled into the documentation. And basically somebody from Microsoft will review it and they'll determine whether or not to merge those changes with the production documentation. So what I'm gonna do in here is I know Ian, so he won't mind me changing myself to being the editor of this. I'm going to go back later. I'm going to delete this, but we should be good to go for this. I go ahead and make this change in here. One big thing about this is GitHub and the documentation here uses markdown language. So if you need to do certain things with it, like bold and other things, there's different techniques that you have to use for markdown. So now we want to commit this change. So we need to add in some information about the change. Proposed change of owner, changed ownership, please delete. Thanks. So then I'd propose that file change. On the next change, it would ask for me to create a pull request. And if I created that pull request, then that would go into the process for that being reviewed. So if we click on the pull request here, you'll notice that these are all of 191 open, over 5,000 have been closed. So these are all things that either people from Microsoft or a lot of these are probably uh, people in the community that have found issues with the documentation. And so they've basically sent these up for Microsoft to take a look at. So that's some basics of working with docs. What I think you're going to find with docs is that it's a really powerful tool for you to find out how to work with all of this new and existing technology in the Microsoft world. So whenever you're looking to learn anything new, or you just need to get to the documentation quickly and easily, go to docs.microsoft.com and then search out whatever you want.
And if you thought this video was interesting or you want to hear something else from me, just leave it in the comments below. Thanks and have a great day.